SpaceX fired up the engines of its space-bound Starship prototype Thursday afternoon, September 8th, in a dramatic test that also set some of the surrounding landscape ablaze. All six of the Raptor engines on SpaceX's Ship 24 vehicle blazed briefly Thursday at 5.30 p.m. EDT at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. This appears to be a successful test. SpaceX then announced Ship 24 completes six-engine static fire test at Starbase. This static fire test marked another step toward launch for Ship 24, which is slated to conduct the Starship program's first ever orbital test flight in the coming months. Although the static fire lasted just a few seconds, a grass fire broke out immediately afterward and is still burning on the south side of Texas Highway 4. It is believed that plastic and other materials ejected from the launch pad are the sources of ignition. The local fire department was out as a safety precaution. Honestly, take a look at this picture. The fire is not very easy to fight without local support. Additionally, many heat tiles on the ship have been falling down due to the immense vibration produced during the static fire. Zach Golden on Twitter said almost 30 damaged or missing tiles on Ship 24 after a six-engine static fire test that lasted for eight seconds. In reply to this tweet, Elon Musk said, Yup, there's a reason we do static fires. Much better to break things on the ground than en route to orbit. Thermal protection tiles are key to a spacecraft surviving re-entry. During re-entry, a spacecraft will gain a massive amount of heat, converting the velocity of the vehicle to heat through friction with the air. There are a few ways to deal with that heat. An ablative heat shield will heat up and burn away, carrying away the energy. The problem with ablative heat shields is that they burn up and need to be replaced. That doesn't work if you want to relaunch a spacecraft within an hour of landing, as SpaceX eventually will with Starship. In order to eventually allow quick reusability, Starship instead uses ceramic thermal protection tiles to insulate the spacecraft from the heat of re-entry. The tiles, like those of the space shuttle, are extremely lightweight and fragile. Each Starship has roughly 25,000 thermal protection tiles, and production of these tiles is not quick. SpaceX makes use of a heat shield bakery in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and will begin producing tiles at Starbase. The current tiles and attachment systems seem prone to cracking and falling off, which won't work if Starship 24 and future Starships are to survive re-entry. SpaceX will need to figure out how to reliably produce more robust thermal tiles and mount them if SpaceX is to fully kit out multiple Starships. SpaceX seems to be doing just that. A slight color variation in the tiles is due to SpaceX experimenting with production. But aside from Ship 24, Booster 7 completed a spin prime test with several Raptor engines at 12.15pm Central Daylight Savings Time. In fact, that was a pretty amazing spin prime test, the biggest one Super Heavy Booster has ever done. But that's about it. Back to our static fire test, the biggest question now is whether Ship 24 is ready for its first orbital flight. Almost 10 months ago, Starship 20, SpaceX's first potentially orbital class Starship prototype, began static fire testing in a somewhat similar way. Its first day of static fires began with a single Raptor vacuum engine and ended with a simultaneous RVAC and sea level Raptor test in October of 2021. In some ways, SpaceX has been a bit less cautious with Starship 24, which is the second potentially orbital class prototype to begin proof testing. Ship 24 already has all six Raptors installed, whereas Ship 20 only had four of the six engines installed during its first static fire tests. SpaceX also took about three weeks to progress from Ship 20's first static fire to its first static fire of all six engines, whereas it appears that Ship 24 could potentially attempt its first six-engine test just a few days to a week from now. On the other hand, Ship 24's path to its first static fire was substantially longer than Ship 20's. Ship 20 completed its first static fire test, or tests, just 25 days after its first proof test, referring to the process of verifying that the prototype was in good working order before moving on to riskier testing with flammable propellant and intentional ignitions. Ship 20 also completed its first six-engine static fire 46 days after testing began. Ship 24, meanwhile, took 75 days to go from its first proof test to its first static fire, 
almost three times slower than Ship 20, a prototype that was essentially the first of its kind. It's possible that Ship 24's upgraded Raptor 2 engines are partially or fully to blame. Instead of jumping straight into hot Raptor testing like Ship 20, which began that particular campaign with a partial ignition pre-burner test, SpaceX put Ship 24 through seven spin prime tests before its first static fire. Regardless, SpaceX has finally crossed that particular Rubicon, and with any luck, Raptor 2 testing can soon end on Ship 24, and then Ship 24 will definitely finish all tasks earlier than Booster 7. In other news, NASA targets late September for the next Artemis 1 launch attempt. But a lot has to go right. Reflect upcoming work to remove and replace seals on two liquid hydrogen lines that connect to the SLS core stage and then perform a tanking test at Launch Complex 39B to confirm that the repairs eliminated leaks seen during the two earlier launch attempts. They also avoid planned use of the deep space network needed for communications with the Orion spacecraft for the impact of NASA's DART spacecraft with a moon orbiting the asteroid Didymos on September 26th. That schedule depends first on completing work on the liquid hydrogen lines. Crews were at the pad replacing the seal on the quick disconnect fitting for one liquid hydrogen line, 20 centimeters in diameter, as well as a separate line 10 centimeters in diameter, that run from ground systems to the core stage of the SLS. Both seals could be replaced by the end of the day if the weather does not interfere with work on the pad. Once the seals are replaced and the lines reconnected, NASA will begin preparations for a tanking test, tentatively scheduled for September 17th. In that test, the agency will fill both the core stage and the upper stage of the SLS with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to verify the performance of the seals. While the rocket will be fully loaded with fuel, NASA does not plan to conduct a formal wet dress rehearsal as it did four times in April and June. Engineers are still investigating what caused the leak in the larger liquid hydrogen line that led to the September 3rd scrub. Mike Bulger, NASA Exploration Ground Systems Program Manager, said there was evidence of a small notch on that seal that will be studied more closely. He added that it was also not yet clear if an inadvertent overpressurization of that liquid hydrogen line during preparations to begin fueling caused the leak. Should NASA get approval to proceed with a launch later this month, the September 23rd launch window opens at 6.47 a.m. Eastern and lasts for two hours, and would result in a short class mission that would end with an Orion splashdown October 18th. The September 27th launch window opens at 11.37 a.m. Eastern and runs for 70 minutes, and would allow for a long class mission ending November 5th. And that's about it for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality content just like this. So for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.